الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر باسا شديدا من لدن ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا حسنا الحمد لله حمد المستزيد عطاء من آلاؤه لا تنتهي عددا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لم يتخذ ولدا ومن ادعى ذلك فقد قال شططا وانزوى بددا وسلك طرائق قددا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله نبي صدق من نهج نهجه لا شك قد رشدا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وكل من اقتفى أثره إلى أن يبعث الناس غدا أما بعد Welcome back to Nectars of the Cave The Nectar of it the secret that this chapter embodies and encompasses. By the permission of Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've come to the last story of this magnificent chapter, Surah Al-Kahf. The last story that Almighty mentioned in this chapter is the story of Dhul Qarnayn. And Dhul Qarnayn, as Almighty mentioned, was one of the mightiest kings that Almighty gave power, strength, and authority. And as we will learn, group of Yehud asked the pagans of Mecca to ask Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about three things. They should ask him about Dhul Qarnayn as one of the three things that they requested. Ask him about Ruh and ask him about Dhul Qarnayn. If he tells you something about Dhul Qarnayn, then indeed he is Allah's messenger and prophet. So this story is what we will learn today all together. I hope and pray that by now you have your Mus'haf or Quran before you. If you do not, then attentively listen to the words of Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala about this mightiest or one of the most authoritative persons on earth, given power by Almighty Allah subhanahu jalla jalal. Almighty says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa yas'alunaka an dhil qarnayn. قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمُ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا إِنَّا مَكَّنَّا لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا فَاتَّبَعَ سَبَبًا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويسألونك عن ذي القرنين قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض 
وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فاتبع سببا إنا مكنا له في الأرض وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حامية ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا These are the lessons that we will take today from these verses that you heard. From this chapter, to be more specific, from the story of Dhul Qarnayn. Who was Dhul Qarnayn? Were you to be asked? Don't go too far. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ala Nabina Muhammad was asked about Dhul Qarnayn because the pagans came and asked him about the Qarnayn. They were goaded by a group of Jews who asked them to ask Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about a person who had traveled the earth from the eastern part of it to the western part of it. Who was he? If he tells you something about him, that means he's a prophet and he receives revelation from Allah. If not, then he is a liar. So they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Dhul Qarnayn. When they asked, Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the hadith mentioned, the answer did not come rapidly. The answer delayed for number of lessons for our own Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Long story short, Jibreel al-Amin came down with the verses teaching the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this great king, about this great leader, Dhul Qarnayn. Almighty says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِلْ Qarnayn." And they ask thee, O Muhammad, about Dhul Qarnayn. They ask you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Dhul Qarnayn. قُلْ Tell them, سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا I will recite a report of him to you. I will teach you about him. I will educate you who this man was. When Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِلْ Qarnayn." They ask you about the Qarnayn. This was his title. Just like kings and leaders obtained titles for themselves. The title for this man was Dhul Qarnayn. Scholars try to understand what did he get this title from and how. Where did he get it from? Why was he called Dhul Qarnayn or named Dhul Qarnayn? The first opinion is, he had established for himself and obtained for himself a long horn, just like a crown that kings for some time, from time to time wear. So that crown that he put and established for himself is called Qarnayn. And Qarn means a horn. And this is an indication of might and strength. Don't you see when you have a ram, the strongest and the, thick, the thicker, the horn, the stronger the ram for the most part. And if you have a ram and the horn is very short, for the most part people have no need or they do not prefer that ram. But the thicker, the stronger, the longer it is, the more appealing the ram is. So he put that on his head as an indication of his um, power and might. And Genghis Khan, as we know in history, also wear things like that, different horns for power or indication of strength. 
So that's the reason why he was called Dhul Qarnayn. The second opinion is that he was called Dhul Qarnayn because he had obtained the power of the East and West. He traveled from East to West and back from West to East, back and forth. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna shamsa tatla'u bayna qarnay shaytan, meaning the sun, i.e. S-U-N, rises from in between the two horns of Satan. That's east and west, rises from east and sets in west. So this is the reason why he was called Dhul Qarnayn, because he traveled between the two. And that's why Tubba al himyari when he praised Dhul Qarnayn, he said, بلغ المشارق والمغارب يبتغي أسباب أمر من حكيم مرشد أو من حكيم مرشد أسباب أمر من حكيم مرشد فرأى مغرب الشمس عند غروبها في عين ذي خلب وثأط حرمدي meaning this is the Qarnayn that Almighty talked about had reached the farthest part of the earth meaning all the way to the eastern part or the western part of the earth from east and then he returned. Imagine someone traveling from east to west, west to east. That's a really strong person giving power and might as Almighty will tell us in this story. Now to be more specific, who was this man? Often people think that Alexander the Great was Dhul Qarnayn. And this is far from truth because the one who was known to the world and history documented him as Alexander the Great, his mentor was Aristotle, the Greek philosopher who had lived 300 years before Jesus Christ, the prophet of Galilee or the messenger of Nazareth. But Dhul Qarnayn that we know from Quran had lived during the time of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and between Prophet Ibrahim and Isa ibn Maryam, it's more than 2,000 years. So imagine Aristotle before Isa 300 years. That means he was closer to the time of Jesus Christ. But here, Dhul Qarnayn had lived 2,000 years before even Isa ibn Maryam. So that's completely two different persons. And often, Greek philosophers or historians, they try to compare this man, meaning Alexander the Great, to Dhul Qarnayn. Why? Because of the power and the strength and the might that Almighty vouchsafe on this man. Both persons, or the first man, Dhul Qarnayn, he was a Muslim muwahid. He was Muslim among Arabs, from Arabs. But the one that was mentored by Aristotle, he was completely kafir, disbeliever, and he was among polytheists, worshipping other than Allah, fire, and others, from Yunnan, meaning from Greek. Among Greek, from Greece. So imagine someone that people try to set comparison. The first man was Muslim, Dhul Qarnayn, Alexander the Great was kafir. So that's not the same person. We come back to expound more about this man, Dhul Qarnayn, that ruled the eastern part and the western part by the permission of Allah. After a short break, we come back. Remain blessed. Wassalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzal ala abdihi al-kitab وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَاءَ الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَاءَ Welcome back to Nectarus of the Cave. The nectar of it, the secret of it that gives sweet aroma and nice fragrance. We've been learning from this for a very long while now. And yet, we are not even willing to finish. Why? Because of the beauty of it. Dhul Qarnayn, scholars mention 
that Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala had endowed him with power and might. Known as Dhul Qarnayn, قال الحافظ ابن كثير رحمه الله ذكر الله تعالى ذا القرنين هذا وأثنى عليه بالعدل وأنه بلغ المشارق والمغارب وملك الأقاليم وقهر أهلها والصحيح أنه كان ملكا من الملوك العادلين Meaning ذا القرنين that we are talking about Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala had praised him and that he was among the kings that ruled with justice. He traveled, the east, he traveled from east to west, west to east. Why? Often whenever people talk about strength and power traveling, we talk about traveling from east to west or west to east. Often north and south are not mentioned. Why? Because these two places are not even prepared or created for people to live because for the most part either engulfed by um, snow or is very gelid environment so life over there is not bearable you cannot bear life in these two places so whenever almighty talks about power and strength or people travel is east and west and not south and north that's the reason and Allah knows best Dhul Qarnayn had traveled, and even our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he talked about the power that Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will give his Ummah, he said, Inna Allah zawali al-arda, faraaytu masharikaha wa magharibaha, wa inna mulka ummati sayablughu ma zuya li minha, aw wa inna ummati sayablughu mulkuha ma zuya li minha. Verily, Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala had zawa li al-ard, meaning he had brought the earth right in front of me to see. He had folded the earth. Zawa means to fold, or zawa means to bring together, meaning Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala had brought the earth for me to see. Imagine the topography of earth in front of him, seeing the east and the west, the best scientist before even scientists learned science the best human being to travel all the way to the seven heavens and return back. Now seeing the earth with its own vastness right in front of him. So the point here is to relate it to the story of Dhul Qarnayn. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَرَأَيْتُ مَشَارِقَهَا وَمَغَارِبَهَا I saw the eastern and the western part. He did not mention south or north for the reason that I mentioned before. This is Dhul Qarnayn's story. So Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala says, teach them a portion of his life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna makanna lahu fil ard. Meaning, we have established him upon the earth by giving him power, dominion, strength, and authority. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا And we've given him for everything a mean. Meaning he has means of executing whatever he wants. Everything that he needs is given. But here, when Allah says everything, it means according to what he needs. Not everything, everything in life, but according to whatever he needs to execute whatever he wants to do is given. Because sometimes kulla shay in Quran is mentioned to mean that which whatever the story is about contains. Allah says about the people of Ad, when he destroyed them, to dammiru kulla shay'in bi amri rabbiha. The punishment destroyed everything, but as we know, it's not really everything. Allah meant everything that it passes on or by. And Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Malikati Saba when he said about her that we've given her also power. Wa utiyat min kulli shay. She had been given everything. But everything meaning according to what she needs for her might, for her power, for her own leadership. Because she was not Muslim. She was not Muslim at that time. But Allah said he gave her everything. And also Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam made her to know that she wasn't given everything. فَمَا آتَانِ اللَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا آتَاكُمْ So in any case, when Allah says everything, it does not really mean everything in general except what Allah meant at that spot. 
So Allah says, Atainahu min kulli shay'in, we've given him of everything a way or a path or means to do whatever he wants in his own power or reign. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّبَعَ sababa," And he took up uh, that opportunity. When Almighty gave him that chance, he took the opportunity. What is the benefit of فَاتَّبَعَ sababa To indicate that some people will be given opportunity, but they will not seize it, they will not take it, they will not apply it. But Dhul Qarnain, when he was given the chance, he took it. Muslims, Allah had given us everything. Nothing is stronger than Quran. Al Quran Quwa, wa Sunnah to Quwa, wa Makana Alayhi Sahaba Quwa. Quran is might and power. Sunnah is power. What Sahaba did to gain strength and lead the world is power. But when we avoided all this, that means we did not take the means. So Dhul Qarnain was given the means of power and leadership. He took it, but us today, we did not take. That's why we're struggling. And one of the very clearest proofs is that look at the way we're suffering today with this um, um, COVID-19, the virus that smited the world. If we had taken the precautions that all my dimension, we wouldn't have struggled today. In any case, Dhul Qarnain took that chance, the opportunity that Almighty granted him, he seized it. He took care of it well. Almighty says, فَتَّبَعَ sababa," And he followed the path, the way, and he took the opportunity of the means provided for him. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ Until he reaches where the sun sets, meaning western part of the world where sun sets. وَجَدْهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئًا He saw the sun, S-U-N, setting in water that is dark. Dark water is called عَيْنٍ حَمِئًا عَيْن in Arabic language is where water gashes forth. And the more the water is called عُيُون meaning where water, um, plenty of water, he reached that place where sun set and he saw the sun setting in that place in dark water. Why? Because when water set for a very long period of time, it turns dark. That's what happens and that's the nature. So, وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةٍ or فِي عَيْنٍ حَامِيَةٍ Meaning, very dark water, he saw the sun setting. But this is what appears to the sight or to eyes or naked eye. Why? Because when sun is setting, if you are flying or in the flight, you see that it's like it's setting in water. Especially if you are passing on Atlantic Ocean or Indian Ocean. Wherever you are around the world, you see when sun setting, it's like it's setting in the water. But that's what appears to your own sight and naked eyes. But in reality, that's not where it's setting because the sun is bigger than the earth itself more than 109 times. And it's bigger than this earth and bigger than all what we know our planet in our solar system that's the biggest that's giving energy and producing um, energy to the rest of the planet. 93 million miles away from the planet Earth according to what scientific filming had shown the world. Yet when we see it's like it's small. But in any case when he reaches there he found over there people. Around that place he found a people living there. So Almighty said, we said to him, Ya Dhal Qarnain, O Dhal Qarnain, Imma an tu'adhib, either you punish these people by killing them, wa imma an tattakhidha fihim husna, or if you want, you may be kind to them, or establish from them, from them some sort of kindness, meaning show them kindness. We give you two options. First, Imma an tu'adhib, either to punish them by killing them, or you may establish for them or from them some sort of kindness, meaning show them kindness. So these are the two options that Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And this is a proof that this king was actually very just because Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the option of either being this or that. That's why Imam uh, Ibn Mujahid or Imam Mujahid and other Imams of this deen said, they are two that ruled the world. Two that ruled the world from eastern part of it all the way to the western part. As for the first, that was Dhul Qarnain. Dhul Qarnain that we are talking about. And the second was Prophet Sulaiman alayhi wa ala baqil anbiya salawatun min Allahi wa salamat. So these were the two that ruled the world, eastern and western. And we know in Quran, in Surati, 
Al-Anbiya in Surah Saba, Allah talked about Sulaiman alayhi salatu salam and also a bit about his father and Naml as well, that Allah had given them power and might. And he said about Sulaiman, we've given him power, strength, dominion and authority that is not befitting for any other human being after him. Wahabna lahu mulka, we've given him mulk. Allah said it's a hiba, meaning it's a gift from us. We gave it to him. So that was brief story about Dhul Qarnayn, this strong leader that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. What are the lessons obtained or gleaned from this man in today's lesson? One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we've given him or we gave him power and strength. But he did not sit down to say, since Almighty Allah gave it to me, it will last forever. Or since Allah gave it to me, I don't have to do much. No, he stood up and he took that chance by traveling the world from east to west. Can you imagine? But Muslims sit in one place and being disrespected and being shouted at and being massacred, being liquefied, being murdered and still sit in one spot. If you have a means, meaning a person, uh, if you don't have a respect given to you in a spot, you know, just leave to a place as Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah uh, mentioned that, you know, if you can't find peace in a spot, just take um, your flight to a place or different spot. So Dhul Qarnayn given the chance and he took it, did not play with it. So Muslims given the chance. Quran is the power, Sunnah is the strength. What Sahaba did to obtain power around the world is what if we hold, we will also gain power and strength the same way Almighty allowed them and established them upon this earth. So this is what happened. The Akhir of this Ummah, this generation will never be pleased or strong until they take what the earliest generation took. This is the lesson we glean. Remain blessed until we see you in another episode. Wassalamu alaikum khitaman waqtida. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzal ala abdihi alkitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja qayyiman ذرا باسا شديدا من لدن ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا حسنا